Uh, Richard from Orange County, California. Welcome to the Narrow Path. Thanks for calling. Thank you for taking the call. My question regarding when uh, in prophecy it states that the world will move against Israel before the Lord is coming, is that referring to today's world or back when that prophecy was made, which would mean most of the Arab world? Well, yeah, it was uh, the, the verse you're thinking of is in Zechariah chapter 12. Um, it's, it's one of the most commonly quoted verses by popular uh, dispensational teachers who are trying to connect what's going on right now in the Middle East to Bible prophecy. Uh, you won't find anything, uh, I don't think, outside this verse that they'll be able to ever use. But here's what it says in Zechariah 12, 1 and following. It says, the burden of the Lord, uh, of the word of the Lord against Israel. Thus says the Lord, who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. Okay, so that, that makes it sound like you know, all the nations of the world are going to be coming against Jerusalem. And then a few chapters later in chapter 14, verse 1 says, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst, for I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, half the city shall go into captivity, the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city, and so forth. Now, those passages talk about many nations coming against Jerusalem. Now, the question would be, is this talking about modern times or times that occurred after the prophet said this, but still long ago, from our point of view, this prophecy was made almost 500 years before Christ. Uh, we could ask, has anything happened in those past 2,500 years since this prophecy was given that might have been the fulfillment of it? Uh, and if not, then, uh, then maybe is, is what's happening today the fulfillment of it. My thought is that it is referring to things that happened after Zechariah's time, but in ancient history from our point of view. Uh, first of all, this section of Zechariah is never mentioned as being uh, a prophecy about the end times. There is nothing in these verses that mention the end times, uh, or the end of the world, or the second coming of Christ. Uh, there are uh, apocalyptic uh, uh, images used that some people have mistaken for references to the second coming of Christ, but which the New Testament writers use to apply to their own time, not to the end of the world. Uh, in my opinion... Since Zechariah was writing at a time where Jerusalem had just been rebuilt, it had been destroyed by the Babylonians some 70 years earlier, Zechariah lived at a time when it had been just newly rebuilt. And when he says, okay, the nations are going to come against Jerusalem, it seems most likely that unless God showed him otherwise, he'd be talking about uh, that Jerusalem, the Jerusalem he lived in, the Jerusalem that had just been rebuilt. And... Uh, uh, but if we believe he's talking about the end times, then we have to believe that the Jerusalem that Zechariah lived in, though it was destroyed in 70 AD and has not yet been fully rebuilt, because there's no temple over there, yet, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that Zechariah probably skips, skips over the destruction of the city that he was living in, skips over another 2,000 years after that, and then talks about a, a time that we're living in. Well, why would he? Why would he not speak of the very, very significant destruction of Jerusalem that happened in A.D. 70? Uh, I, I mean, to me, it, it just doesn't seem likely. Now, uh, a person can take these verses about the end times if they want to, but it's, it's far from obvious that this is a legitimate way to take them. And then I would also say that in chapters, especially uh, 11 through 14, the last four chapters of Zechariah, uh, there are about, uh, I think, about half a dozen passages in this section that are quoted in the New Testament as being fulfilled in New Testament times. That is, in the times of the apostles who were quoting it. They, they saw the fulfillment of it there, uh, not least of all, uh, the end of chapter 11, which has the Messiah being uh, betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Well, that happened you know, you know, when Jesus was uh, betrayed by uh, Judas. We read of the outpouring of the Spirit on the inhabitants of Jerusalem in chapter 12, verse 10. Well, that happened in AD 70. I mean, excuse me, AD 30 uh, at Pentecost. 
uh, in chapter 13, verse 1, it mentions that there, in that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and uncleanness. Almost certainly that's referring to the blood of Jesus shed on the cross. And uh, at least I, I would take it that way. I, I can't imagine why it would be taken as something else by a Christian. Uh, in chapter 13, verse 7, it says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, meaning the Messiah, against the man who is my companion. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Well, that's Zechariah 13, 7. Jesus quoted that in Matthew 26, 31 and said, that's going to happen tonight. Uh, you know, you, you'll all forsake me so that it will be fulfilled. Strike the shepherd, the sheep. So, so Jesus identified and Paul identified and the, the New Testament identifies these verses as belonging to the first century, not the 21st century. Uh, and, and there's likewise similar things in chapter 14, which we have New Testament references that would seem to point to the New Testament era and, and the first century uh, beginning of the fulfillment. So um, if someone would say, well, these chapters are about the end of the world, I'd say, well, let, let me just say this. Uh, at least a handful of quotations from these chapters are identified in the New Testament as talking about the first century. And zero passages from these chapters are ever identified in the New Testament as about the end of the world or the 21st century. None of, the, none mm -hmm. of those in the New Testament who quote this section ever apply it to eschatology. They always apply it to the first coming of Christ, not the second. So, I mean, a, a people can believe whatever they want to, but when it comes to having reasons to believe something, I'd rather believe something that there are reasons to believe. Right. I agree. I agree.